Welcome to Critical Point Podcast. It is April 21st, 8.36 a.m. Central Time. This is Rich Pawson. We're looking at the July soybean futures. That's today's show. Let's take a look at the daily chart here of some of the short-term, uh, intermonth or monthly kind of trends. And what we can see is that in March, L3 bottoms, we had buyer interest top, then we had seller interest, then buyer interest, seller interest, and now the market is speeding lower. So the seller interest is actually increasing in the sense of how aggressive. Now, we may later learn there wasn't much volume, there really wasn't much business, uh, that maybe most were on the sideline, but the point is the seller uh, was more aggressive. And to create bottoms, you have to get the seller to say, not selling even a tick lower, got to at least wait for a bounce, or maybe there's no more left to sell, whatever, whatever the reason, but you got to get them to stop. And a few buyers can then turn the market up, and that can actually inspire more buyers, especially technical momentum kind of traders and fund traders. At any rate, we can see the five-day average has been working well for resistance. They just continually sell near the five-day average, and they'll continue to do this until they're proven wrong. Now, the market has slipped below our best downside target here for this particular L3 trend, which has spent most of its time trending lower. And that's a function of larger cycles that are bearish. That's the characteristics you would see. Brief rallies lengthy declines okay now it's trended below the objective but that actually makes the objective more right so the analysis is more right actually gets another star okay now the problem is we really don't have much here of how, what's the next downside objective because if it's going lower than your best guess it's more bearish it could go still lower well the problem is we're thinking well it violated this support of March, back in March, and sometimes people like to buy the breakdown of that low. So let's give them a chance here because time-wise, the model hasn't uh, is still on track of everything. This is the correct time, okay? And it's suggesting by next week, the market should at least pick its head up a little bit and go into a level three top, and then we'll have another level three decline. Now, as we look at the daily stochastic, it is extremely oversold. It's actually trying to turn positive, but I'm against buying a buy signal on an oversold stochastic indicator if the market does not actually close higher. There's too much risk there that it's a fake signal, okay? Got to have that higher close along with that actual buy signal. And I don't think we're going to get that, okay, because these the grains, the entire commodity sector is very weak because of what's going on in crude oil. And then last night we had North Korea, South Korea news. We have the virus. We have the pandemic. We have the world is basically turned inside out, upside down, okay? So nobody really wants to buy anything in terms of huge amounts, even though they realize the prices are great value and they should be bought long term. The concern, this is not yet the time to do it, that there's risk there, okay? Nevertheless, we think there's going to be a pop by next week, and then we will reevaluate, but we just don't have a downside objective for you. And what we want to warn you is when a, st a stochastic indicator or any technical indicator is extremely oversold as this one is, you have to be concerned the market will go still lower, and ideally what we need is the indicator to go higher while the market's going lower or the market blips up for just a couple of days maybe, and gets that indicator to go up, then the market goes still lower, but the indicator refuses to go still lower. This means the momentum of the indicator is turning higher, and there's an old saying by professionals of prior, prior decades in technical analysis saying momentum leads price. So if we can get that indicator to turn up while price is still going lower, then when price turns up, the indicator will actually be leading and you'll get a more better buy signal and probably a better bottom. At any rate, we have warned that you know there was potential of eight dollars, seven eighty. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see what that's looking like. But just realize the five day average near eight forty is resistance in the July. The former target low of eight thirty four could be resistance, meaning it might just bump its head inside of that box. Realize maybe we can get a bounce by next week, but there is no sign of a bottom yet. It may continue to fall this week. Let's zoom out to the monthly chart for our weekly chart for bigger trend. And so here's our weekly chart. 
And those L3 trends were pops and drops within these L2 trends, which really, until recently, have shown impressive business cycle behavior. Now, here's what's going on. We basically had much like a half cycle here, another half cycle, and then this is the actual L2 cycle that's completing a larger L1 cycle, okay? And it's still in the time zone and price zone for a bottom any week now, and we're willing to give it to week of May 4th. I'm a little concerned we might have to move that out a little bit, delay it a little bit, but right at the moment we're thinking it's going to bottom any time uh, this week and the next two weeks for this level one, it should coincide with a level three bottom. So maybe if it does bounce by next week, it may be the start of something more important to the upside and not just, oh, I'm picking my head up before I fall more. Don't know for sure. We'll just have to see what we get. Now, how low in terms of actual price? Well, we're looking chances for eight bucks on down to 794. I have other studies of 780. I don't think anybody knows. You can always come up with lower price objectives, okay? Uh, but there will be someone who will come up with some kind of calculation and they later will say they came close to it. Right at the moment, I'm more in mindset of not trying to pick a price, but just watch the pattern, watch the trend, watch the behavior, and calculate the amount of time it takes to burn through this supply and to get demand to step up to the plate. All right, at any rate, what we've got is the weekly stochastic is bearish. It's wide enough spread to be concerned of lingering downside momentum. It's approaching oversold, not convinced it's oversold enough. I'm a bit concerned this has still got some downside action and may not bottom for another two weeks. What would change my mind? Well, you got to take out this week's high, actually. You got to get it back above 845 and three quarters for more than a day. I want to see two, three, four days holding above that. Then we probably have got a reversal off that level one low. And then eventually I'd like to see the weekly turn up to a buy signal. Now, I don't want to wait for it to go up that large amount. Hopefully we can zero in here and take a stab at this uh, picking a bottom. Now, what will occur when the level one bottom is in place? We should see enough demand to get this to rally into a level one top, do latter half May to maybe early June. And as of yet, there's no indication of how much upside, but this market is so weak that I'd be concerned even by early June, we may only see the market in the 870s, 880s area. And first, we have to see how low it goes, because the lower it goes, the more likely we'll lower that 870s to 880s for that level one top. So vicious bear market for all these grains and a lot of these commodities. The world has turned upside down. The trend is still down. For soybeans, manage your risk relative to the analysis of others and your own. Thank you.